shifting gears towards libertarianism, um, tell us what, what was your light bulb moment that got you into libertarianism? I, uh, I can remember, actually, <laughs> when I was, uh, I think, about 16, uh, after, after high school, I was uh, worked in my father's engineering business and I was unpacking some big crates that had come from America with, uh, uh, with some uh, mining equipment. In those days, there was no polyurethane and there was no bubble wrap to uh, pack these things to stop them moving. But in these crates were crumpled up magazines. And the magazines, I remember clearly, were called the Freeman Magazine. Produced the monthly magazine produced by this Foundation for Economic Education in New York. Now, as a 16-year-old, I smoothed those magazines out and I took them home and read them, and I loved the talk of, uh, of uh, individual responsibility, of uh, self-sufficiency, and uh, this really was the, the essence of entrepreneurship, the, the, the message of the free market. And... Um, about two years later, I got to be the editor of the uh, local School of Mines magazine. And I used some of that material. I sort of modified it, Australianized it, used it a bit. And was I in trouble? Because it was a highly labor unionized city in which I lived. And I got uh, people who were. Uh, really very aggressively saying to me, where did you get those ideas? They're all wrong. They'll never work. You can't do You Let your other unionist people down. Uh, you know. And uh, so I wrote a letter to this, uh, the president of the Foundation for Economic. I said, uh, letter to Reed, dear Mr. Reed. I don't think your ideas are very good. They're getting me into trouble. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Reed wrote back a lovely letter. He called me Mr. Manners. He didn't know I was 16, 18 <laughs> at that time. He wrote, he said, well, actually, our ideas are pretty good. They really stem back from Aristotle, and they've been polished up ever since, and we're still polishing them up. And he said, but what you should remember is if you want to take a position on, on any matter, you have to put yourself in the position of knowing more about it than any of your critics. And with that in mind, we've put you on our mailing list, and here's a few books to start with, and if you ever have any questions, just contact me and I'll give you as much information as I can. Wow. That, <clears throat> that started a lifelong friendship with Leonard Reed, right until to his, right till his death of, uh, at age 83. And I visited him, <clears throat> and I spent time with him, <clears throat> I always learnt so much. Following that, I uh, used to write magazine, I write articles hoping that they might be published in the Freeman magazine, but they never were. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wrote to me one, one day and he said, uh, there was the banners, he said, um, I enjoy reading your stuff, but of course we can't, we can't uh, publish it. And uh, so I thought I'd let you know, he said, uh, you must always remember that we only have a license to change ourselves. We don't have a license to change anyone else or the world around us. Uh, it's for them. All we can do is bring an idea to the threshold of someone's consciousness. And then we back away. If they accept that idea, it's theirs and it's theirs for life. But that's all we can do. I thought about that and every time, uh, I never got much published <laughs> until that time, but every time I read something, uh, reread it again after I've written it to send it away as a letter to the editor or an editor or a, a magazine article, I read it again and I say, am I sticking with Leonard Reed's rules? And I back off a little bit, I leave it. I don't mind, I don't mind what people think and what what conclusions they come to, as long as I'm satisfied that they've got all the information they needed to make up their mind. And, and since, since I've taken his advice, everything I ever write gets published. And it's, it's, it has made a big difference, just being able to back, back off. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about what other people think, just take that idea 
to the threshold of their consciousness. Your libertarian activism actually started with that, with those Freeman mm. magazines <coughs> and you writing in a local paper. That's actually where your activism <coughs> sort of began. It, uh, it was interesting. Out of that uh, led me to meet a lot of very interesting people in the free market, the libertarian econo economic world out there. And then I found that they were all really linked together in some way. Leonard Reed actually had introduced Ayn Rand to Ludwig von Mises because he oh, yes, was introduced to Ayn Rand himself. And he said, what a fine novelist she is, but she needs a bit of economic input. So he introduced her to Mises. They got to know each other. Um, who were the other people? The major players in this thing was um, um, John Hospers, who was the first, uh, um, the first uh, libertarian presidential candidate to run in the USA. He, he's a... Uh, <clears throat> He's a, was a professor of philosophy, and he actually wrote the textbook that I studied at the University of WA. Um, he wrote the textbook, and I, then I got to know him personally, and I, then he tells me that he was part of this, this Ayn Rand private little group with Alan Greenspan. They called themselves, jokingly, they called themselves the Collective. And, oh, uh, and, right, yeah. and, and, uh, and, and of course, Mises was uh, was originally in a in a, a great influence on Hayek's life. Then I met Hayek through all this network, and uh, you, you just you met all the and Rothbard, of course. You meet all these people personally, and you realise an incredible bunch of people they are. But they all have the similar. Now, they never agree, agree entirely with each other. That makes the libertarian <laughs> movement so interesting. Everyone's got a better angle. But you put it all together, the message is consistent. You know, now what you just said about them not really agreeing with, them, yeah. with each other all the time kind of makes me feel better because when with all the people, libertarians that I know, we can never really agree on everything. <laughs> we always kind of have hard feelings over the way, like few little things that the other side does not yeah. agree. So that really makes me feel much better now. Yeah, so they, they have their own disagreements. That's interesting. It annoys me a little bit because there's so many, so many libertarians spin their wheels. They spend so much energy arguing points against each other. Yeah, and they're all like really unique individuals. <laughs> They defend themselves. The enemy is out there for us all to see. Let's let's make, let's save our energy for defeating the right. enemy. The enemy is much better organised than we are. Well, socialists, of course. <laughs> One of the libertarian ideas that you mentioned in the book, and which I find extremely important, is that uh, quote: uh, "No resource is more precious than freedom." End quote. Um, it sort of reminds me. It sort of reminds me of my own. Uh, homeland, uh, Western Balkans, former, the region of former Yugoslavia, where we have uh, no freedom whatsoever, but we have plenty of natural resources. And so people always wonder, um, you know, how come we cannot be prosperous? We have all these, you know, natural resources, you know, how, how come we can't make it? But then also, here in Hong Kong, we, the only thing that people really have is aban abundance of freedom. They, do, they have no almost no resources whatsoever. So I guess that really ties up to your, to your saying that no resources is more, no resources is more precious than freedom. So. It's absolutely you. We're, we're here in Hong Kong right now, and as you move around Hong Kong, you can feel the energy in the people. You can feel it. They are all going about their business. They're going about their lives. So many countries, and Australia is becoming a little bit like this. When we gather together, we talk about what we're doing, sometimes half of our time is spent on discussing all the rules and the regulations that prevent us from even getting started. <clears throat> Here there's no such talk like that. They just talk about how to get started, how they got successful and how they're going to be more successful. And uh, that's the secret is to release that human energy and that can only be done in a free society. Because, you know, like people back home, they're always just, oh, we have everything, but, you know, we, we cannot succeed because all of these politicians are not doing their job right. Uh, but nobody questions the government. Everybody's like, you know, we, we need to find the right people who will 
do do all the things that government is supposed to do, which is all basically everything <laughs> for the people. You know, no, nobody asks about freedom. You know, like, just let me do you know what I want to, you know, what I do, I've what never, I do with my life. I've never, I've never waited for approval. So I've never waited for a, a, a government. I, 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 you step in and you do it. You work it all out later. And uh, the, the, if you're dealing with the bureaucracy, which I've spent so much time of my life dealing with them, I don't spend a lot of, a lot of time with it, but the, <clears throat> the occasions on which I've been confronted with the bureaucracy have been numerous, but I've not spent too much actual time, because to spend time on them only encourages them. <laughs> I think best you go around them, you find a way around this sort of thing and then if they are confronting you with breaking rules and regulations when well, I say I don't mind breaking rules as long as there's no victim mm -hmm. that's the that's the real measurement but <clears throat> they always back off if they're prosecuting you whether it be the taxation department or the regulatory authorities they always back off because they cannot afford you to win publicly because for you to win publicly will expose them for what they are so you must look as though you're going to take it right to the wire and then they back off the risks to them are far more serious than the risks to you so they back off really gives me so many ideas right now I really wish you know I really wish I knew knew this sort of information before when I, I was trying to do my own business in back in my home country. Their case is not sound. <laughs> <laughs> what are they trying to do? They're preventing you from what? Earning a living? Employing people? Creating wealth that can be shared amongst so many? They're accusing you of creating prosperity. How dare you <laughs> create prosperity? Governments are only good at creating poverty. If you remind them of that, that's their specialty. Your specialty is creating prosperity. Who's going to win in the public arena if it, gets, if it really gets to the front page of the newspapers? Mm.